How to make botanical ink using red cabbage kitchen scraps. Materials. Red cabbage scraps, a small saucepan not to be used for food, stirring utensil, water, a hot plate or stove top, a sanitized jar, cheesecloth, funnel, gum arabic, a whole clove or thyme oil, white vinegar, baking soda, a coffee filter, and watercolor paper. So I'm just starting with the outer leaves of cabbage. Every time I buy a cabbage, I take off the outer leaves and freeze them. We can chop them up finely so that the pigment's released easier. Then we will place all of these chopped leaves into the saucepan, again dedicated solely for ink and dye and not to be used for food after this. We will fill this up fully with water just until it's covered and then we can place it on our stove or hot plate so we want this to be on low simmering for at least an hour, if not three or four. Low and slow seems to be the best approach for ink in order to retain color and prevent browning. We can see that the water is already quite pigmented, although we want it to be much more concentrated than that. About every hour, I'm just submerging a test strip of watercolor paper to see how the color is changing and concentrating until it gets to a point that I'm satisfied with. So it's not until the test strips are fully dry that we can see the true color of the pigment. It's been simmering for three hours now and I'm satisfied with the small amount of water and the concentration of pigment left. So I'm just going to strain it using this cheesecloth over top of a clean jar. You can also use a fine mesh strainer for this, anything that's going to separate the liquid from the cabbage and feel free to squeeze out any liquid remaining in the cabbage. Just wear gloves if you don't want dyed hands. Now that's all strained, we can see the remaining ink. It looks quite pigmented. It's always hard to tell until it's actually on paper, but I'm pretty satisfied with that. And there's no water left in the saucepan there. And then this step isn't necessary, but it um, straining it through a coffee filter will remove any remaining organic particles of the red cabbage. If you're just planning on using this with a brush, you might prefer to have those particles just for some interest. But if you're planning on using this with a pen and nibs, then you definitely want to strain it. To help preserve the ink and prevent molding, um, in addition to using sanitized jars, I'm also just adding a few drops of thyme oil. And then gum arabic comes from the acacia tree and I'm just adding it in to be a binder. I'm just adding 10 drops to the larger jar and three to the smaller one. This will help the pigment bind to the paper and last longer. Now with this finished ink with the thyme oil and gum arabic in there, I'm just dividing it up to test out some pH modifiers. So the first is just white vinegar, which will make the ink far more acid. And we can see immediately, even before swirling it, it's becoming more vibrant, lighter pink. This is baking soda. This will make the ink more basic. So I'll put a few pinches in there, I think, before swirling it to see how that changes the hue or the color. We can see again almost immediately it turns darker and more of a blue. I thought I would try out soap as well. This is just natural dish soap. Generally soap is more basic than even baking soda, but we'll see what effect that has. So let's test out our inks. This is the red cabbage unmodified and then the red cabbage with dish soap, which should be the most basic. The red cabbage and baking soda, again a basic, and then red cabbage and white vinegar, the most acidic. Since botanical inks are always an experiment, I'm going to go ahead and label these here for future reference. So I'm labeling them with the date, sometimes how long I've simmered it, whether I'm using tap water or um, rainwater, which will change the ink as well, and then any modifiers I've added. I'm going to make sure that I label my finished jars of ink as well, just with the material, so red cabbage, the date, and the thyme oil and gum arabic I've added. And I'm just using one of the final test strips to do that. So here's our ink before it's dry, and then a day later when it's fully dried. And then a month later, it's changed even more. So botanical ink is living, it will continue to change over time, some more than others, and I encourage you to experiment with different binders and different modifiers. This book is a great resource for anyone interested in further ink making. Thanks for watching!